Hi, I'm Rafi. I'm at the Scan booth at uh, GTC24, and this morning I'm joined by Max Bickley, uh, product from the. You head up the product uh, team for Omniverse Spatial Framework. Omniverse Spatial Framework. Awesome. Now I love that phrase personally as a user because I've been using Omniverse for a couple of years now on, in the development of my animated show and uh, 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 narrative experiences for various uh, different use cases as a production tool. And uh, VR and uh, spatial computing has become synonymous with the way I create characters and the way I lay out scenes. I don't come from a 3D sort of technical background. I'm a storyteller and a showrunner. So developing characters and worlds has always been my thing. But the combination of OpenUSD's framework and the collaboration it offers between apps, along with Omnibus XR and the accessibility that it offers me as, a, as someone who works in film and lays out scenes, all these exciting pieces of technology are coming together for me as a media and entertainment professional, but you as someone who works in spatial, in the whole spatial team, what are some of the things you're seeing uh, in this space and how do, how do you view it in your team, the whole spatial computing element? Yeah, so one thing that we're really trying to do with Omniverse is build a platform for people to build tools which can go to as many different places and display devices as you can imagine. And so um, the way we're going to do that is by moving a lot of our compute architecture into the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then now we can start to think of um, the ways in which we can access uh, Omniverse either spatially or traditionally through 2D isn't limited by the workstation that you have at your feet. And I think this is really important for VR because as we've noticed, more and more companies want to scale down the size of their headsets. We want the batteries to last longer. We want them to be lighter weight. Um, we want them to be more comfortable to wear, not get so hot. Um, and that's going to be at odds with people like yourself and some of our customers who want to keep growing the complexity of what they render. Um, and so if we can successfully move that compute off of the device and into the cloud, now the device choices that people can make for how they consume what they build in Omniverse is really going to be limitless. Um, we showed that this week with the Vision Pro where we're streaming from GDN, which is our graphics delivery network, right into the Vision Pro. And so you get the best of what the Vision Pro offers, all that pass-through data, um, the local UI with all your local gestures, but you get this incredible ray trace data set um, that could never fit by itself uh, on the Vision Pro. Right. And so I think for creators, that's yeah. gonna allow them to really just make their, uh, their content look incredible and as good as it can with RTX. And then all of our frameworks are there to let you pick and choose how you wanna deliver it to people who wanna see it. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And the, the demos that we've seen here on the stand and the reveal at the keynote, um, really underscores all those things that you just mentioned. You also mentioned GDN. Mm -hmm. That rings a bell. Yeah. Tell me about the where, where, where has GDN been prior to this? Yeah, so GDN is our graphics delivery network that's built on the same network as GeForce Now. And uh, okay. GeForce Now is our game streaming service that we've had for over a decade. And it turns out getting gamers 4K streams with incredibly low input latency um, is all the foundational work you need to start to stream XR. Yeah. And so we've been working now for a number of years on something we call Cloud XR. Mm -hmm. uh, we started with phones and tablets, streaming a monoscopic single view to iPhones, Android, uh, and iPads. And now with GDN and our latest GPUs, we now have the power to stream stereo from the cloud to a device like the Vision Pro. Oh, fantastic. So it's kind of built on something that's already been road tested quite a bit with, I wouldn't say a prototype version of XR, but it was like the, the evolution of what you need to Absolutely. get to XR's requirements, right? Absolutely. You can sort of look at the past five years and see how things like 5G, Wi-Fi 6, um, our latest GPUs, all those things finally starting to coalesce at the right time yeah. to really enable you to stream more or less 4K per eye um, to a device, which I think is really an astounding number of pixels when, when you think about it. Oh, absolutely, and that kind of fidelity isn't just for uh, people like me who focus on entertainment, but it's uh, kind of essential for other sectors like you know, going, going through in industries yeah. you know, that needed manufacturing, you know, pre vising architecture, right? You need that really sharp, absolutely. realistic sense of presence. Yeah. So what we like to call digital twins are really this interesting revolution where a lot of industries 
are realizing that um, if they're going to go build a product, build a building or a factory, mm -hmm. if they can construct that product digitally uh, first, they can simulate it. Uh, they can test it out. And this has so many applications in spatial as well. Um, we showed the Nissan car that our friends at yes. Katana and Nissan did. And if you're designing a car and you want to know what it feels like to sit in the driver's seat, you don't want to do that on a 2D screen. You want to actually feel like you're sitting in that driver's mm -hmm. seat. Mm -hmm. And so for them to be able to maintain all that CAD engineering data and detail and get that to a device that's high quality like the Vision Pro, yeah. um, those customers who want to do that digital product previs, uh, they're really set up for success to now reduce their iteration time reduce the waste, they're no longer building physical mock-ups of those cars, it's yeah. all just digital mock-ups. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing an amazing amount of growth in that space. Now that discipline of helping you validate uh, a physical execution before breaking ground, as it were, before putting physical stuff down with a digital twin, that mm -hmm. philosophy kind of is in parallel with the way I use uh, spatial tools Absolutely. to create a character, especially if it's a if it's a CG, 3D animated project, as my show is, um, it makes sense to sculpt and model and lay out your scene because you're going to be working in 3D throughout. And especially yeah. with the transmedia mindset, you know, when you develop an IP, you think of multiple formats. Uh, working in VR or any spatial computing sort of um, infrastructure means that it's powered by real-time tech, which means it's game ready. Yep. So it can be deployed very easily into gaming. Yep. Uh, but because of the fidelity you're talking about, it means a final pixel for linear entertainment with great camera uh, tools mm -hmm. means that I can create linear cinematic content yeah. with the same assets, with the same scene. And of course, I'm working in VR, which means I can also deploy to VR and AR um, uh, devices. Absolutely. And with cloud, it means that quality stays consistent with the cloud and GDN and the cloud XR framework. Absolutely, and you can scale up that distribution as well, right? GDN is in 130 countries. Um, it's all over the place so that if you need to distribute to uh, tons of viewers for a simultaneous viewing, yeah. that's something that I, that infrastructure is set up and ready for you to do. And I also think it's interesting, you know, I used to be in animation and all that rendering would, would happen offline towards the tail end of production. And I think you're exactly right, with real-time ray tracing, uh, all that really fine detail work can exist all places in your pipeline, mm -hmm. and seeing everything in context all the time mm -hmm. uh, is incredibly powerful. You know, no longer are you waiting to see all that final detail of your characters right. once everything's done and rendered. You can see it in your early layout phase. You can start to build that context of what your shots are right away. Yes, and with OpenUSD being in my backbone, or the backbone of my pipeline, um, it means that the number of cycles I go through are still there, but the speed at which I can iterate, way, way quicker, especially yeah. if I'm connecting Substance Painter to Unreal to Blender, yeah. USC, all by the nuclear server. It just means that at every stage, uh, everyone's sharing the same information yeah. and it's, it's up to date. So it's super exciting. And yeah. to be able to see that come into a fully immersive space, it still feels kind of magical to me, even though I've been using space yeah, computing yeah. for years. hundred percent. How do you feel about it? Because you're in the thick of it. Well, I think like those iterations that you talk about, it's the productivity of those iterations that I think has gone up. Um, a lot of teams, when they thought about putting VR somewhere in their pipeline, they kind of have to choose one place to put it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll put it at the layout stage and we'll do an export out yeah. of the layout pipeline and bring it into VR manually, convert all the assets and get it running on a device. But now when you can just have VR uh, or XR attached right to the RTX renderer, you can be at any stage of your production pipeline and immediately see it in VR. Mm -hmm. So you can keep working in Substance. You don't have to worry about exporting to Substance and getting that data into the headset. You just immediately go look at it. Yeah, that's a, exactly, it's awesome. So you as someone who's been playing with forward-facing tech for a while, you're a tool maker, you're heavily involved in the spatial framework here at NVIDIA. Uh, what are you looking forward to in 2024 to 25 um, that you're most excited to work on? Because I know you have a fantastic feedback loop with your clients and, yeah. and use cases, not just in media entertainment, but across the different sectors that NVIDIA has been powering. Yeah. What are you excited about? So this week we announced our Omniverse APIs, which is how we're going to allow uh, any software developer to start to bake Omniverse into their existing tools or new tools that they want to build. Um, and we fully expect XR to come along for that ride and our entire spatial framework to come along for that ride. And so I think it's going to be really exciting over the next year or two to see 
again, these traditional workstation-based applications yeah. that had to be at your feet in order to do XR, now be up into the cloud um, and distributed across all users of these tools and allowing them to choose, hey, you know, I use this specific tool. It maybe doesn't have a VR or a spatial component today, mm -hmm. but soon those tool makers will be able to plug in our APIs and immediately tap into that power. And so I really love the idea of this consistent, high quality ray trace spatial experience starting to be spread, spread around across all types of 3D tools. Yeah, and if it can deliver that at that high quality, it means that stylized executions or non-photorealistic stuff can absolutely come along for 100%. the ride because it, generally it's less demanding than, yeah. than something photorealistic. Well, Max, we talked about OpenUSD, Omniverse, um, obviously spatial computing and the spatial framework where you know it's, a, it's turning out to be a scalable solution so it's going to open up the headset space a lot more because the compute can be in the cloud and not on the device. This is stuff that I could talk about forever with you. And I All think, day. I think we will because this is day, you know, the, this is day four. I think we'll have time to do that, but that's all we have time for in this video. But if you enjoyed that, um, you know, find Max on, uh, on LinkedIn and just chat to him about the same stuff. But for everything else on Scan and, and uh, XR and otherwise, um, stay tuned to this channel. And uh, yeah, for all our GTC 24 coverage, keep it right here.